be honest, watering your garden can be really tedious. You've got to wait till the right time of day. You've got to have huge muscles to be able to cut all this water around. And you've got to have the patience to make sure all your plants are getting the right amount of water. So today, I'm going to teach you how to take the irritation out of irrigation and install a subsurface irrigation system. The problem with many irrigation systems is that they can end up watering the leaves of the plants rather than the roots. That's a massive waste of water. Plus, they don't always disperse the water evenly across the garden. The other problem with watering the leaves of plants is that when water hangs around on the leaves, you can end up with mildews and fungus. On the other hand, subsurface irrigation systems deliver water directly to the roots of the plants. Plus, they're cheap, easy to install, and can reduce the amount of water used in your garden by up to 75%. There's a range of products on the market. Some are prefabricated drip line, Others include drippers in the line, and then you've got porous weeping hose as well. Depending on your situation and the lay of your garden, there's a number of products that might be available to you. Over short distances and across a flat block, something like a weeping porous hose might suit. Now, these are great if you're operating a low pressure system, like a rainwater tank, but it can be a little bit erratic, meaning that some areas of your garden may get heaps of water while others get none. On the upside though, they're dead easy to install, they're a great use of recycled tyres and they're pretty cheap. For longer distances or gardens with a bit of undulation, you may consider using some prefabricated drip line. Now the beauty of this stuff is it has drippers installed within the line at about a 30 centimetre spacing from each other. These drippers disperse water really evenly at a steady rate so you know exactly what you're going to get. For gardens with heaps of undulation, look for pressure compensating drip line. This just means that the flow of water will be really even across the whole garden. For flatter gardens or shorter distances, look for non-compensating pipe. This will do the job just fine. If you're operating from a low pressure system like a tank, there's drip line for this as well. Oh, and this purple stuff is for dispersing grey water. Ideally, you'd install these sorts of systems before you've planted out your garden, but you can pipe them into established gardens like this one, just taking care not to tread on any plants or disturb any shallow roots. The installation of this stuff is dead easy, just involves laying the pipe on top of soil and under mulch. This will act to reduce your evaporation enormously. Now my hot tip here is when you lay it out, check to see the system's working before you mulch. Just makes it easier to see that everything's happening. As the water will spread out and down from each dripper, it's really important to know your soil type before you lay out your drip line, as this will affect how far the water can move. If you don't know what your soil type is, get out there and have a look, have a feel, or even easier, take a sample down to your local garden centre. Look, some soils are just more absorbent than others, and they can actually spread the water from each dripper by up to a metre, so it's really important to know what you've got. Clay soil tends to retain lots of water, so in this case, you should space your drip lines between 50 and 100 centimetres. If you have loam soil, your drip lines need to be spaced between 40 and 80 centimetres. For sandy soil, which tends to be less retentive, you need to space them between 30 and 50 centimetres. You can also adjust the amount of water that's dispersed by your subsurface irrigation system. If you have lots of succulents or robust natives in your patch, then you'll need less water than, say, a veggie patch. In some parts of your garden, you may not need any irrigation at all. One way to limit the water flow is to reduce the number of drippers in the line by removing them. If you're using prefabricated drip line, you can cut out the section you don't need. In its place, you can put a section of unperforated poly pipe using a joiner of an appropriate size. I reckon it's best to lay your drip line out in either a loop or a grid pattern depending on the shape of your garden. Looping the drip line back onto itself or into a poly main line means that you're maintaining the pressure over the line so your water's dispersed more evenly. Now I'm going to show you how to lay out your drip line in a couple of different situations depending on your type of garden. In the case of a sparse garden, or if you just have a single standing plant or tree you want to irrigate, I suggest connecting a black polypipe line to its hat. 
then loop the drip line around the plant so that it feeds back onto itself. Because the black pipe is unperforated, you won't waste water getting it from the tap to where it really needs to be. For a more densely planted garden, like a veggie patch, I'd use a 13mm poly pipe main line. I'd feed the drip line back into the system at each end, ensuring more consistent water flow. And, once you've tested it, don't forget to add some lovely mulch on top. And finally, if your garden's already got a sprinkler system set up like this one, you can actually convert them over to subsurface irrigation systems. It's a tricky DIY job, so it's worth seeking some professional advice. But I reckon it's a good thing to do because it'll save you heaps of water. Now for any further information on this or any other aspect of subsurface irrigation, have a look at our fact sheets on sgaonline.org.au.